So when we're talking about errors, and in particular the, the types of errors and the sources of errors in one of the previous videos, um, one thing we should try to keep out of this entire discussion is mistakes. So mistakes, or sometimes called human error, those are not the kinds of error uh, that we're talking about here. Um, human error is uh, something that can be corrected. Uh, mistakes are things that can be corrected. Um, mistakes and human error, um, or what, what people call human error, is not something that goes into an uncertainty analysis and that does not get uh, that doesn't get reported in um, in a, a, a lab report. Okay, um, so these mistakes, when you realize you've made a mistake, you repeat the procedure and you correct the mistake. So in that sense, also you know colloquially, we call mistakes errors. Well, this is not that kind of error. Mistakes get corrected. Um, there is one kind of human effect that may play a role in our uncertainty analysis, although I don't think it will be relevant in any of the, um, the labs that you'll be doing. Um, and that is some kind of inadvertent forcing of, um, of, of results or inadvertent selection bias. So let's say um, you, you know that, or you're trying to measure a quantity and you know that the expected value is, is somewhere here. Maybe there's a world average, um, let's call it, you know, uh, you know what the, 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 the charge of the electron over the mass of the electron, you know what the value has, has to be. And you keep measuring values here. And, you know, you repeat the experiment. And every time you keep measuring things that are low. So it's natural in that case to think of, well, what are the effects that could shift my points higher? And you wouldn't necessarily go looking for physical phenomena that could shift your points lower. So you're selecting only those effects that could shift your points in the right direction, and you're biasing your analysis. Uh, so this is a case of um, selection bias. Um, or, uh, and, and this, this leads to, to inadvertent forcing of the measurement in a particular direction. And obviously, we want to avoid that, right? Um, we don't want to uh, only look for effects that, uh, that pull our data in one direction. Um, and uh, it, it's hard to avoid this if you're actually looking at the data. So what, what we sometimes do in, in big experiments where there is a clear expectation and we're trying to measure something, whether something agrees or disagrees from that value is we're introducing something called blinding. So we're introducing a additional parameter in our measurements which um, which arbitrarily shifts these points around. And no one knows that parameter until at the very end when we're done with the analysis, when we've figured out in which direction all of the uh, uh, uncertainties or in which direction all of the systematic effects go. Once that an entire analysis is done, we unblind, um, we remove the box or we recorrect our, our measurements um, with that hidden parameter and then we'll see where the data falls. And if it falls low at that point, then we know we can trust or uncertainty analysis. Um, and we do indeed have a lower value compared to this expected value. This is particularly important for experiments where there's a, there's a very clear expectation and there's high stakes about um, agreeing or disagreeing with that expected value. And so you'll see that in, in particle physics searches for new physics or for um, agreeing or disagreeing with, um, with, with uh, the, the theory of uh, general relativity or, you know, big things where people are, are really um, testing the fundamentals of, um, of our understanding of nature. So um, there is selection bias, which we can try to avoid, um, but any kind of mistakes 
we should not lump into our errors. Um, we should repeat the measurement until we're, we're confident that we can stand behind it.